Logan. Here. Deborah Nelson. Here. Marilyn Ertley. Here. Jen Schwedy. Here. Michelle Blythe. Here. And Don Vanny. Here. Madam Mayor, I move for approval of the agenda as presented. Second. Question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, well, we have a presentation for you this evening. So I'm really excited to have you guys hear firsthand about our mobile integrated health program. Um, it, during, uh, just before the 2021 legislative session, Heather and I and Dr. Caitlin Gabo, who you're gonna meet tonight, and several other partners um, sat around a table for a number of hours trying to figure out how we can help um, take some of the burden off our first responders for mental health issues that seem to be more prevalent in our community, particularly during the restrictions of COVID. Um, and we came up with the idea for a program and we're very thankful to Senator Keith Wagner, who then found an appropriation in the budget, state budget, for mm -hmm. us to do a beta test on the program for two years. So I'm happy to introduce you to Dr. Caitlin Gabeau from the Center for Social Work Justice. This one right, right here, right here. Right here. Gets it right next to Heather. Oh. Oh, yeah. You've yes. got a couple of the Tony's done it all set. Oh, you have the presenter sign over here. I know, presenters are for the staff, so. Oh, oh. okay, <laughs> thank you. So I'm just going to quickly pass out some of these. Um, thank you. Quarterly report and just a little bit of information mm. about us. Thank you. Let me skip you too, since you are yeah. <laughs> Mention. I'm Caitlin Gubo, um, and I run um, the Center for Justice Social Work. Um, so I have um, I have two clinical social workers. Um, one that actually just got licensed. She was one of our interns, and we were able to hire her. Um, and then we have two master's level interns right now. Two that are onboarding this summer. Um, and then we have a couple other students who have expressed interest recently. So hopefully we will be able to get them on um, this summer as well. So kind of what our goal is with this program, and I know you guys have heard about it a little bit already, um, but we really want to sort of reduce that burden on our first responders, our police officers and firefighters to just make sure that when they are coming in contact with someone who needs those additional resources, that they have um, an outlet um, and some assistance. Um, and so we have been working very hard. We have lots of referrals that come in. Um, and if you want to just kind of peek at this quarterly report, there's lots of just kind of language around um, what we're learning. Um, but kind of one of the big things is on page four. Um, it talks about our referrals and kind of what we're doing numbers wise. And so this is January, February, and March. So we received 273 referrals. And so those are from um, police officers and firefighters. Generally, those are um, behavioral health related coded calls um, for folks who are struggling with mental health challenges, um, substance use challenges, some housing insecurities. Um, we're getting lots of older folks who are having um, trouble maintaining housing or uh, chronic falls, things like that. Um, so all in all, we um, provided 909 services. And so that's, you know, um, communicating with clients, planning with them, advocating for them, maybe coordinating services, talking to their loved ones. Um, one really, really important thing with this project, one of my interns said this to me on Friday, and it really just stuck with me that none of us have really worked at an organization where our client can be anyone. And so if you think of, you know, some of the folks that are struggling the most in our community, they're probably going to be the less likely ones to accept the services willingly. Um, they might not realize they have a problem or something along those lines. So we can actually um, have their family members be our client and actually coach them and case manage them through how to support their loved one. Um, and so I'm going to tell you a little success story here in a little bit, but that was one of those situations where we were really able to um, help the mom who ended up really being able to advocate for her son in a way um, that really greatly reduced um, his contact with emergency services. Um, so, so far about 194 clients, we have I think probably 215 now just within um, adding April. 
And then I just did a rough calculation of hours. It's about 988 hours so far that we have spent um, on this project, which is pretty cool to put it into numbers, how hard everyone's been working. Um, so when we first started this, we were out on Camano Island. We recently moved into the old Station 47, um, and that has been really wonderful because it's really um, encouraging clients to come and see us and see our space and feel comfortable to come and meet with a service provider. We're a lot different than your average, you know, community mental health center. Um, a lot, like a very homey vibe. We really want them to feel like they can be comfortable. Um, we have snacks and tea and coffee and anything that they need, but we really just want everyone to feel like they're on a level playing field with their neighbor who's also getting services. Um, so our big success story, um, he is a gentleman. Um, his mom actually wanted to come tonight, but she was really busy. She is probably one of those uh, people who will always sing our praises because she told us um, that she finally feels like she has her son back, which is pretty cool. Um, but we had received our first referral for him back in November, and we just had the hardest time getting a hold of him. Um, he wasn't answering our phone calls or, you know, texting back. Um, and, and we had 88 referrals for him. And so we were a little nervous to go to his home because we're like, he has a lot of delusions and just really scary ones. And so we wanted to really make sure we were kind of staffing appropriately. We, we communicated with the police department and Compass Impact to really make sure that we had like all of our services together. Um, and this gentleman had been um, diagnosed with schizophrenia um, when he was 22-ish, 23, um, and it really, really got worse within the last year and a half. Um, and so really like in the midst of COVID when you couldn't really do much um, or advocate or be there with your loved ones in the hospital. So he had been detained about a year ago, got out of the hospital and kind of just went back into that delusional cycle. Um, and mom was kind of just doing the best she could. He's an adult, so she couldn't do too much. Um, and she started to really lose contact with her family members. Her other children stopped coming by. Um, her ex-husband had to move out of the home. There were just a lot of things that um, really disconnected her. Um, and she was trying to work from home and had this adult son who was like three times her size that was doing things that she didn't know how to control. And so it was just sort of like this house of scariness and uncertainty. So we actually got involved um, and really actually partnered closely with her because he wasn't really in a place where he could accept services. And even if he did, I don't know that his mental state was really, he was understanding what he was doing. Um, so we were actually able to partner um, with the police department um, and then the county DCRs to bring the DCR out um, to the home and perform an assessment to determine if he needed to be hospitalized. And at that point, he was really starting to ramp up. Um, he was not detained on that first day, but what we ended up doing is we worked throughout the entire weekend with that mom to make sure that she had all the support she needed. She was documenting everything. Um, and then we were actually able to um, provide some additional support and collaborate with some of the supervisors at the DCR team because there were some things that were sort of lost in communication, which obviously is gonna happen when you're doing crisis work in the field. Um, and so he, unfortunately, he assaulted a family member, so he had to go to jail. Um, and sometimes, you know, the, the family member was okay, luckily, but sometimes that creates a captive audience, which is kind of unfortunate and really not the goal of our program to get people into jail. But when we do have that situation, we can also intervene there. Um, so we were able to work with the jail staff, the mental health professionals there, um, as well as the DCRs to make sure that he had an assessment before he was released. Um, and he was, um, ended up getting detained. He was placed at Providence um, and in their new mental health unit and stayed there for almost a whole month. By the end of it, he was completely willing. Um, and we were able to advocate for what we call an LRO. So that's a least restrictive order. So that means this person um, has struggled quite a bit. And so we're gonna put them on this order that's ordered by a judge. Um, and if he acts outside of that, stops taking his meds, stops going to his appointments, we can actually encourage him to get detained again pretty easily. Um, and while that's removing you know, people's rights, it's also a way that we can really make sure that they're getting the help that they need. Um, and so after, you know, his last couple of weeks, he was reading The Great Gatsby, he was communicating with his mom, 
um, engaging fully in all of his services, taking his medications. He went back home with mom, and I think he was calling 911 probably like seven to 10 times a day um, mm -hmm. prior to our intervention. And now he's calling once every couple of days and actually just over the weekend agreed to call us instead. Um, and has agreed to have an in-person meeting with us. So um, his mom is one of those people who in the beginning was like very skeptical of what we were doing, but now um, it's just this constant communication and we actually have some officers who know to listen for the radio if he calls in and were their first call to say, hey, he's calling in, what's going on? Then we call him or his mom, check in, and then that's just how we make sure we're staying right on top of it. So this super close collaboration um, where we can really see someone go from extreme delusional psychotic behavior to still maintaining some of those voices and some of those delusions which aren't necessarily going to go away with medication all the time, um, but they're more manageable now. And he can be you know, a part of the community, which is really cool to see. So that's kind of one of our, our good ones that we like to share, um, especially since it involves the police department so closely, Compass Impact. Um, I think we even worked with Brittany on it a little bit. Um, so we just, it was super cool to be able to really utilize all of our resources. But yeah, so that's kind of our big one. But I mostly just wanted to share our success story, introduce myself, and make sure that I could just say hi to everyone and thank you all um, for all of your support and everything. So if you ever have any questions, all of our information is on there. Um, and I'm always happy to chat about it. I could talk about it for a long time, but I know you're all very busy people, so <laughs> so thank you so much for having me tonight. Thank you. Let's yeah, just see you. if any of our council members have any questions. Definitely. For you before you go, does anybody have any questions for Caitlin? I don't, <clears throat> I don't have a question, but I want to say that this program is absolutely incredible, <clears throat> and you. I wish every single city in our country had it, mm -hmm. and I really appreciate the mayor and you pushing this forward and getting it done. I know I have told people about it and they go, what, you know, why aren't we doing that? And it really, really helps because I had an uncle that was one of those constant calls mm -hmm. because if he fell, he couldn't get back up again. Right. So I know what it's like if you have to have first responders go to somebody's house mm -hmm. a couple times a day. Yeah. So this is just absolutely, and the people you're helping are the ones that so desperately need it. So thank you, thank you for all you thank do. Thank you. Yes, and we're trying to gather as much information so we can do all those lessons learned so that we can give that all to the state and to Senator Wagner so we can really just replicate this as much as possible. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I just I want to say that the goal of our, our first responders will always be to respond to our citizens in need. They will answer the 911 calls. What we're trying to do is layer tools and give a layered approach so there's more options to actually really work with our citizens and get them to the right place, the right place. and the right support system. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. You guys will keep, Sarah will in her monthly reports report on the stats oh, from the MIH to you so you'll be able to watch Excuse the Excuse me, Don had a question. Don has a oh, question. Don, sorry. <laughs> no, I just, well, again, would like to thank Caitlin too for all the services they're providing, but I'd also ask if I could also get a copy of the memoranda, the notice and stuff that she's handed out to you guys. We'll get that to you, Don. Yeah. Perfect, thank we, you. We leave a couple copies with Wendy. Yeah. Okay, that was good. good. Okay, so um, I talked about that in the state of the city. I thought you guys probably should get a briefing yes. on it. Thank you. <laughs> See the people actually doing the work. <laughs> Okay, our first item on our workshop this evening is an ordinance approving the Old Town Residential Design Standards. And Amy Rusco is here to present to us tonight. And she gets to sit in the presenter's chair. <laughs> Good evening, Madam Mayor and City Council. Thank you for having me here today. <laughs> so the first item is the Old Town Residential Design Standards. So I know that everyone on council knows about it, but this is the first time you're probably seeing the finished product. Mm -hmm. So the city partnered with um, HKP to develop the design standards that were in your packet. So this is to support Senate Bill 1923 to try to efficiently utilize land to create more affordable housing on small existing lots or infill lots in the old downtown. Mm -hmm. So by doing that, what we did, I'm sorry, um, 
How we approached this was in order to get the missing middle housing into the old downtown was through duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, those kind of things. We wanted to make sure that we didn't lose the character that downtown has of the old town residential. So uh, we came up with these design guidelines or standards, I'm sorry, that should help um, keep the craftsman houses that are downtown. There's uh, five different types that are pretty much downtown. So what we're trying to do is if someone does a triplex, oh, <laughs> if someone does do a, like a triplex that the doors, like you'll see, still see three doors across the front, it will still be built like a house where you won't know driving by whether it's a single family home or, or three. So that's the goal of the standards of making everything just blend into the old downtown. So that's kind of my introduction. If you have any questions about the document itself, I'm more than happy to answer any of those. Um, not necessarily a question, but just I wanted to say I'm thrilled to see it. Mm -hmm. And because I saw one that was m kind of a maybe one, maybe a couple years ago now, and this has so much clarity to it and great definition. And as I read through about the different types of houses, I could think of all on all the blocks as I take my walks through old downtown. It's like, oh, that's that kind of house and that's that kind of house. And some of them are newer, like my house, you know, that was built with these kind of standards. But then a lot of them are 1900, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and as a person who lives here, I'm very happy to see this because as places are being built around me, I know that the integrity of historic downtown will be kept. And that's one reason why I chose to build and move into Arlington was for that sense of historic community. So thank you to you and to the Planning Commission for this excellent work they've done. I have to give credit to Mark as well. He's the one that started it. Yeah. So uh, I do, I want to make sure that it was, I am kind of just finishing it off, bringing it here, but he definitely was the one that, that got this going and, you know, and got the work with HKP. So yeah. I, have a, I have a couple of questions. Sure. And it might be in here. This was a big document to get I through know. on the yeah. first gorgeous weekend that we had. <laughs> and my, my yard needed some attention. Um, but I noticed that, that we're really encouraging rear loading and alley access for the homes and that. Yep. And I just want to bring to your attention that we also need to address how we do utilities to those homes as mm -hmm. well. When waste management went to the bigger trucks for picking up garbage, there are some alleys in Old Town they cannot get through because the wires are too low. Mm -hmm. And so I Correct. just want to be able to make sure however we're going to build homes, people can still get access to services and, you know, with lots of home delivery trucks and things like that. So the new, um, I actually am going to call PUD for you on that, um, honestly. Uh, they should be able to raise some stuff up, um, hopefully. Um, so let, I will work on that. It's not just that. my alley. If you drive There's through other several ones. I'm gonna alleys, have a look you at see all very alleys. low hanging wires. Yeah. But all new, all new development every, across the city is underground utilities. Right. But this is infill, so Correct. it's so not going to be underground. Even, even infill, we're having them bring it down the pole and then into their lot. So it won't be any new lines is what it, okay. but the existing ones, I definitely will call, I meant to um, do that a couple weeks ago when I talked to you, just to see if they can do an assessment throughout the city um, at their time to see which, which ones are maybe hanging a little bit lower than they should be. And then and there's also, I hate to say this, but there's a lot of encroachment in the alleys in Old Town yeah. from building, from people pushing a fence line out, from things Vehicles. like that. And so I, mm -hmm. I just worry that if we're going to force people into rear loading, which I think fits for the parking and the way downtown is, we're having things happen in the alleys that are detrimental to that. And I don't know how we address that. Okay. We can work on that. Okay. <laughs> Thank can, you. Can I tag on to that? Because there is problems of that, not just buildings and fences. Well, maybe it's because of buildings and fences. People are actually blocking halfway the alleys. My alley is one of them. With vehicles? With a vehicle. Okay. Yeah. And so I'm not... Again, I'm hesitant to call police on things like that, but how do we monitor that in our city? Because the emergency vehicles wouldn't be able to get down the alley for that, so we, it's I a concern. Can have our code enforcement, I can talk to Mark and see if we can't have um, Carrie go out and do some, some proactive uh, co code enforcement on it. That'd be great. 
I don't know if he'll catch everything, but at least talk to them about parking where they're parking. Mm -hmm. Sorry, just taking some notes. Oh, go for it. <laughs> I was just wondering, so you're saying if the wires are too low within the alleyway for like the trash uh, waste management and that, are they going to go underground then? Um, or are they gonna raise them up? Well, that's what I need to call. I don't mm -hmm. know if they're PUD lines. Actually, some of them might be um, other communications because mm -hmm. they're the PUDs is probably higher. Right. But I thought they'd be a good contact to start with first to see who, who I contact. So sometimes yeah. when they get installed, they'll sag over time. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if that's what's happening or if they were just installed too low mm -hmm. or just to try to get yeah. a handle on it. What about Zipley? Are they going to? <laughs> They're everywhere. Don't, don't ask me about Zipley. <laughs> they've been working in downtown a lot. Old yeah, town. they've been working in Old Town they have? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're upgrading the speeds. So if they go through the alleyway, are they going to be, is it all going to work out? They should have a certain or? height that we, they, they... There's regulations, as Amy yeah. told me, yeah. but over time... Yeah. And I'm not talking about the new things. It's I what agree. happens the old ones. Yeah, yeah. the things that have been there forever. In the alleys, the mm -hmm. sagging of Correct. the electrical mm -hmm. lines happens over time. And that's. Right. Um, we need okay. sprucing up. Agreed. So I love that we have standards. I just want standards to, to be, be enforced. <laughs> enforced and uniformly applied. Perfect. Ongoing. <laughs> I will do my best on okay, that. Thanks. Michelle and then Don. Um, you said run it down the pole? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what you, you were kind of... Yeah, uh, underground. And, and then where does it go? Or do you not know? Yeah, so what they do is they take... Um, it's like a... I don't know what kind of material it is. It's a, some sort of metal. It's like a round, it's like this big. Mm -hmm. So it's like conduit that runs mm -hmm. down an actual utility pole. And then when it gets to the bottom, it just runs... I don't know what they put in the ground right there. <laughs> and then it runs to someone's house. And then uh, Yes, and then up to their power box or their meter box or whatnot. So the pole stays there? For right now, because there's already... Other people, Other people okay, using okay. it. So uh, if we want to go done. underground, I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. If we can get um, yeah. permission to change some of that over, that would be fabulous. That would be really good. Yeah. I imagine that would be depending on who funds the bill for that. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. UD sure. would be more than willing to. I'm not sure. I would love that. For it. I bet they would. I'm not sure. I, I see the residents would. paying for that, or not no. should they have to? Agreed. No. But no, I would love to see everything. It's just good to know, have this conversation, and mm -hmm. know what's what. Don had a question as well, Amy. I don't know what you're yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, Amy, the last thing I remember on the garbage trucks and stuff going using the alleys, and especially up where I'm at, I think that all ended pretty much when we went to waste management. The city of Arlington had their own dump right. trucks or garbage trucks way back, and as far as I know, at 425 South Olympic, they stopped going through the alleys over 30 years ago. Yeah, a couple blocks down from you, they have to go through the alley because the hill on McLeod. Yeah. Um, the only access is through the alley. Same. And your alley yeah. has a problem for a uh, aid unit getting through it because it's yeah. encroached on by your garage right now. <laughs> <laughs> Where you park the trailer by the garage. Like I hope, I mean, I saw this because in my alley, my, I actually, we actually had an ambulance hit a neighbor's garage from oh an encroachment, God. trying to get someplace through. to service a house yeah. that was having a crisis. Oh. That's something that should be looked at for all the alleys. I agree. I worry about that. I, do I worry know. about when we can't get medical services through. Mm -hmm. So Amy, the question then, in situations like that, as the permits come in to your office, is that something that's looked at by the permit techs of the, you know, where the property line is and public right of way and the building? Um, yeah, it's actually uh, the planner reviews that. Uh, so this, whoever's on staff as the planner is the one that reviews the setbacks. Okay. So the rear setback in all of Old Town is five feet. So they should be any building should be five feet away from the alley. Okay. Those are ones that are coming in for permits. Exactly. Yeah, the <laughs> well, I think what ones. you're talking about are things that have happened that, years and years yeah. back and decades ago well, yeah. there's and some just, happening now that they're not and some may or may not have permits so sometimes we don't know especially if it's on the back side we can't we don't yeah. always see that someone's building something Unless somebody without knows. a permit mm -hmm. okay good information <laughs> i actually have a question for you just as a reminder uh years ago didn't we pass a standard for uh downtown not the housing 
not the housing, but, but for the, yeah, we, the city itself. Yeah, it's th those are guidelines. They're not guidelines, a standard. Yeah. Guidelines, yeah. But these will be standards that people have to adhere to. Guidelines okay. are like, can you stay within this framework? Okay, mm -hmm. and they're not. Okay, because I was I thought they had to, but they don't. We mm -hmm. just suggested. No, you can paint mm -hmm. your building any color you wanted. Maybe we need to look at that. This is better. <laughs> Would you like the Olympic guidelines to come back as standards? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Let's, let's okay. get through these old town Correct. ones first. It'll probably be next year if that's okay. Through that. All right. Yeah. But just so you know our intent. Yeah. No, that's great. Yes. I'm I'm happy to hear that. So I'm glad we're having the conversation as well. Mm -hmm. I was hoping that I wasn't bringing something that you didn't want. So this is great. You kind of do run into problems with that when you have like a business, and I'll just say Napa, where their, their colors are, their colors, that, that, that's their standard mm -hmm. color. If it doesn't fall into the guidelines, wh what happens? You know, and you have a, a certain yeah. business or something that comes in and that's their, that's their logo or their, you know, their theme for their business and it doesn't fit into ours. So how does that work? Right now, we don't have a choice. Right. Right. Even if we made the design guidelines we have into standards, yeah. it's not going to change anything that's already here. Right. It would be for new development or redevelopment. So if a company came in that, you know, they were red and yellow and purple or whatever, that was their, their trademark for their company, and it was something really cool that came in, we would not allow that because it didn't fit into the guideline? I think what Standard. would happen is that that company or their site mm -hmm. selector, whoever was representing them, would have a very intense conversation mm -hmm. with CED about what, this, mm -hmm. what the good design guidelines we, are downtown. Yeah. You know. We would probably have a variance process that we would bring to you for yeah. approval or, count, or planning commission or whatever, however we set that up or mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, yeah. But then once we allow one, then that's where Exactly. It gets kind of, once we have standards, then they should probably pretty much be met unless there's mm -hmm. something going on. Mm -hmm. We need to be careful, so I guess, on that. So we send them to Smoky Point. <laughs> oh. Heather. But consider Leavenworth. They, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the cutest place around, yeah. and they must have a standard because mm -hmm. they do. the one that comes to mind is Safeway, and your, your brand can only be whatever big, and it can mm -hmm. be those colors, but that's all you get. You don't yeah. get the entire That's what I was look. thinking. So yeah. it's just a portion of it kind mm -hmm. of to acknowledge that you are Safeway or you are whomever. Whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and wayfinding, it's, yeah. then you can see that it is a Safeway. Yeah, I mean, everybody would appreciate that, but I was just, yeah. There's yeah, ways. we can. There's ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we. I would love to get your input on what kind of um, design you want. I would and, hate to turn away that. a big business or something really cool <laughs> just because they didn't fit in. Yeah, with someone them. that brought a lot of revenue. Yeah, that would bring a <laughs> yeah. business to our Services. our city mm -hmm. because oh, you can't have that color, you know. That they can have be. it just this big. <laughs> but I'd like it to be nice too. Mm -hmm. So it's like <laughs> hmm. good discussions. Okay. Does anybody else have any other questions for Amy on the standards for Old Town mm -hmm. Residential? No, good conversation. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot in there, mm -hmm. so I reserve mm -hmm. the right to have more questions next week. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Amy. I think you have the next item on our agenda as well, I do. Mm -hmm. which is a resolution approving the Still Guamish Square Valley vacation. Yes. So this is a privately initiated uh, petition to that was submitted by Stillaguamish Square to vacate a portion of unopened right-of-way that's located at the northwest end of 5th Street, I guess, on the very end of 5th Street facing Highway 9, or ending at oh, that's kind of Highway 9, where the old tire shop used to be. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, there's a piece of right-of-way that heads north from 5th Street. It's um, 12 feet by 114. So they're looking at expanding that park, the parking lot that they current, or, the, or they currently own the, the property where the tire shop was removed. Okay. So they're looking at expanding their parking. Okay. So they want to vacate the alley. So they do own property on uh, three sides of the alley. Um, but this resolution is actually just to, well, just, is to direct staff to take it to planning commission for recommendation and to set a public hearing. And I believe I put into the resolution um, June 6th. It, 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 that date can change on, on your 
your choice. Um, it can be any meeting that you want in the future. It doesn't have to be June 6th. Um, and then also there was a piece of our code that I did not put into the resolution. I wasn't sure how to word it, but this is also the time to know if that I can add to the resolution whether the council would like the applicant to submit a, an appraisal for the alley or how we're going to, um, how, how the alley will be vacated. Will we, will we be accepting money for it? Um, it doesn't need to be up on appraisal. Is it something that we've said already? That's something I did not put into the resolution. I wasn't sure how to address that. So can I clarify, just make sure I understand. This is a piece of city property, correct? It's currently a grass, but it's right, it's, it's right away from 5th Street from the, oh uh, shoot, from the, an old So plot. it's that little piece, if I'm sitting on 5th, looking straight across west, like, tw Mm -hmm. No, it's, and it's, it's not the, the fifth gravel Ave area. It's not the Fifth Avenue. Um, we need right to have away. a visual. For yeah, that. yeah. We'll, that's we'll what, get okay. some clarification on this because I, I think there's some pieces the missing here. We need to have that. Okay. This particular right of way is between Highway Nine and their existing parking lot, okay. north of. Because it said fifth. north and south, not east and west. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it runs parallel to Highway Nine, and it when Highway Nine was moved. It created some slivers of property, and that was one of them. The oh. city used to have an alley back there that paralleled nine when nine was farther over. Okay. And a so map this, would be this, great. this was created. The other piece of this that's that's really not part of this, but it is, it, it, is that the city has that Fifth Avenue right of way there, and of course, we don't ever intend on it connecting to right. nine uh, again. Mm -hmm. Um, so we've been working with the property owner on a, a kind of a public-private partnership to create some more parking in there that would that's be That's what I was, because we've talked about yeah, that's that. that's what my past. question was, because this doesn't yeah. say it's going to be used to create additional parking. Well, we have, um, I do have a site map that they propose, but it's not, um, a, maybe I shouldn't speak for public works, but. Um, it's not accurate. It's not what we are wanting to see um, okay. between community mm -hmm. development and public works and I believe administration. So I did not include that in. Right. the packet because I didn't want to give a, a notion that that's what we were going to accept as a site plan right um, they but had access we, points where we did not want them I get that but could we actually strengthen the resolution say that the intent for the property is to provide for additional parking, parking? Um, I was gonna wait for the ordinance on that so the resolution is setting the hearing mm. oh. and so um, hmm. the resolution doesn't do anything but set the hearing and have us take and have staff take to Planning Commission and, and then ask for an appraisal, anyway. and it will come back to you as, with all these ordinance. details. Well, I can bring right. back a okay, Amy. This is a different process than we've normally done for vacation, so sorry. Oh, I would yeah. no, that's fine. I was just going off of the code, so I yeah. don't know oh, what perfect. the normal process that's is. That's what oh, we want. Code. You're good. Okay, yeah. it's good. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't. honestly, I I feel really bad because I should have maybe no, you checked in. Have I, I do have a it. map I can show you. Um, that I can supply with it that does not have their proposal. Yeah, if you'll get that it might to Amy, she'll some... send it to all the council tomorrow. Okay, okay. Right. okay. And then I'll also put it in the packet for, or have Wendy Where? add it to the packet for next week, or okay. Okay. yeah, next week, perfect. if that works. That's perfect. Okay. okay. And then is there an appraisal wanted from the applicant, or are we gonna do that at a later date with No, I think we need to, legal? I think, my intent on this was we're a little bit ahead of of it, I think, but the okay. intent was was to do an agreement with them to create the partnership, so that the I idea see. here is the city's going to retain the right of way on fifth. Mm -hmm. The applicant's going to redo their parking lot and be able to in increase it with the dedication of this um, old alleyway. Okay, but you know the it would be kind of a joint project for Fifth Avenue, so they would help with the. Mm -hmm. Okay. you know paving or that makes sense. something to it's like we'll share the parking together. space if you mm -hmm. build because it. it's mutually beneficial right and that at that point if we come to that agreement an appraisal isn't needed yeah. okay that's what i was so do you want to move to I, be determined on the appraisal let's just say okay so for the resolution tonight setting a hearing would you would you like to move it farther than the june 6 that i proposed until we can have an agreement mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think that'd be good. Okay, so like before August break or after, do you think that? Before. Before? Yeah, we'll okay. work on like it. Like July? We'll work on a date before. Before next meeting? Yeah. Okay, thank you. 
Sorry, I no, do no, apologize. I'm good. learning the process as well. She's a busy well. woman. She wants to know when she's going to I'm just trying to timely. I like it. <laughs> it's all good. It's through. all good. <laughs> it's going to get done in a timely manner. So, you know, great job. All right. So I will supply the necessary documents to go to come before you next week. Okay. And thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hey. Go get her. I like her. <laughs> Okay, so next up we have the 2021 Utility and Pavement Preservation Project Closeout. Looks like we have Jim Kelly. Thought we were going to get Chris. <laughs> oh, there she is. <laughs> Thank you very much, Madam Mayor and Council Members. Uh, this item before you is more, again, paperwork at the end of a project. Um, Reese Construction, they completed all their last remaining punch list items and in uh, May of this year the project was deemed officially complete. Um, as such, we would like to recommend that we recognize the project as being co complete and authorize the uh, mayor to send a letter um, of project acceptance. The project was originally bid at $2,034,636. There were change orders due to quantity overruns in the amount of 190854 There were some quantities that were less. That was a deduction of $49,281.11, sales tax at $102,661.06 for a final contract price of $2 million. $278,869.95. Zephra? Um, Jim, were you pleased with all of the work that Reese did this past year on this? Not as pleased as I have been on previous occasions. Um, the quality of the work that they performed and that's in the ground I am pleased with. Some of the other stuff, um, overshooting, um, <coughs> Uh, compost onto people's sidewalks, um, gravel, you know. That's what I was going to, because I, my yard was one of them, or my little, I, I, and I still have a gap from my utility box to the ground, you know, that's several inches. It, it, and it, it, when they started the work, it was level, you know, because I had had turf, grass and stuff, and, it, and then it's all <coughs> gravel, am I correct? Okay. Yes. It's all gravel around it, so we can't grow grass. So I, I, I would say that's substandard. That they didn't substandard. leave it the way it started. Um, yes. Yeah, so I, I will. I will insert myself in this construction process at the, at, who, if they win it again, okay. at the next pre-con meeting, and I will set um, definite ground rules. Okay. So. Yeah. I, I would just want to make sure, because I, again, when I walk, I kind of paid attention to where they've done their finish work and and it just isn't up to standard compared to past years. So there were I'm glad you know that. There, there were different people. They also, um, some of the cross street trenches, they did not put shoulder cuts on those. So they will be coming back this summer to do a lot of fix up work on those. Okay. So. Thank you. Don had his hand up. Go ahead, yeah, Don. Just, just following Deb's comments and stuff. I was just curious, like when I go out for my walks around town and stuff, I've noticed some of the side streets. Or did we stop doing center striping on some of the side streets? Or because I noticed all these repo paving jobs that some of the side streets have no center markings whatsoever. Yes, there are quite a few uh, streets in Arlington, the Old Town area that we do, and small residential streets where we do not put striping in. Okay. Heather. So, Jim, it, it was budgeted at X and it came in at Y. Where does the additional money come from? Um, the Transportation Improvement Board. Um, okay, so. The TBD, isn't this? The TBD? I'm sorry, the Transportation Benefit. Benefit District. Yes. And or, because they did utility improvements at the same time, depends on what the overrun came from. If it mm -hmm. was a water utility cost and it goes to the water utility, storm utility. So, okay. um, these costs are. They're just right here listed in general. They could have been pavement costs. It could have been okay. water main extension costs. If it was part of the pavement, because it was sales tax collected, so mm -hmm. we did we did 
go over budget in the collections of that last year too. So oh, okay. it was buffer. Thank you. That's a good question. Any other questions for Jim? This one? All right, we'll move on to his next item, which is the low bid award of the contract for the water reclamation facility membrane installation project. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Mayor and Council Members. This item before you is to award a, a contract to a low bidder for the installation of membranes uh, at three of our MBR tanks. That would be tanks number one, three, and four. Uh, we publicly bid this project. We received two bids. The low bidder was, uh, is um, McClure and Sons in the amount of $213,580.05. Uh, we are recommending that we award this contract to McClure and Sons in that amount. Any questions for Jim on this? Move on to your next item then, which is the contract change order number one for the water reclamation facility equalization basin project. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor and Council Members. Um, as you go through with the construction project, you have additions and deductions. And what I would like to do right now at this time, come through and make a contract change order in the amount of $94,805 to the water reclamation, the uh, water reclamation facility equalization project. Uh, we have had three construction change directives that total that amount. Um, the first one was to have the contractor repair a leaking pipeline in one of our biological nutrient removal basins. It's been leaking for years. We could never get underneath it. You needed special equipment to be able to get underneath there, so they, um, did that work. Um, uh, change number two was to have the contractor come in and with the supply chain change issues, we were supposed to have all of our membranes mm -hmm. show up last year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then we weren't going to have any and then at the last minute we had just enough membranes show up for one replacement, one tank. So we had the contractor unload the membranes and then we gave them a change directive to go ahead and install the membranes in the one tank. We did not have time to publicly bid it. So um, the contractor who installed it, McLaurin Sons, is also the low bidder that won the installation of the rest of the membranes. So those are the three items. The uh, repair of a three water line at BNR Basin number three, um, a contract change to unload the membranes, and then for installing membranes. This all falls into budgeted amounts? Yes. So we're all good, so yes. it's just information, basically? Well, it's permission for the mayor permission to definitely. sign an okay. amendment, uh, a contract amendment, uh, increasing the amount by $94,000. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Questions? Okay. Thank you, Jim. Okay, thank you very much, Madam Mayor and Council Members. Good to see you. Okay, our final item this evening is our favorite report of the month, it's the financial report. Well, thank you, Madam Mayor. I appreciate the, <laughs> the confidence there. <laughs> um, good evening, members of council. Um, at the risk of sounding uh, repetitive, I'll start off with my sales tax re report, um, but it's at least so far has been good news. It's continuing to grow. Um, based on what we're seeing in all the different sectors, Arlington economy does seem to be strong and stable. Uh, construction activity does still lead the growth in, in sales tax, although most other business sectors are also seeing growth, um, at least compared to quarter one of last year. Um, our first quarter revenues increased by 1.1 million for uh, comparing first quarter this year to last year, and about 87% of that growth is from the construction um, industry. Uh, overall, our general fund expenses are right where they should be. They're just slightly below um, where we budgeted through first quarter of the year. So I just want to thank 
all the departments for monitoring their budgets closely and working with me when they do see unexpected things so we can uh, work through the budget process together and hopefully have no surprises to council when we get to the amendment process. That's always my number one goal, <laughs> no surprises. <laughs> um, we share similar goals. <laughs> yes. I, I also included, um, which I don't think I've done before, um, a list of capital projects the city is funding this mm. year. Yeah, um, we see. typically have significant investments in our budget every year, and I was thinking about as I was pulling this together that we don't really have a way to show, you know, a comprehensive picture of all the investment that we're doing. Um, all at one time outside of the budget process. I know the departments include information on their monthly reports, you know, the expenses are in the individual capital funds and the report, but you don't really see it all combined together. So I was trying to think of a way to show that, so I kind of put this together quickly, but I want to think forward on how I, I think it's important information. I, I, I hope you enjoyed um, yeah. seeing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, very nice. So I would like to think going forward, how can I include something like that that is maybe more meaningful to you, you know, at least on a quarterly basis so you can see where we are because we, we do some significant investment in our city and that we do some good work. Great. So. One, one, I love that idea. That would be very helpful is to maybe add a column for percentage complete. Yes. Mm -hmm. That would be really Good helpful. Idea. Yes. Oh. Okay. Good. So, yes, any feedback or data that you'd like to see, I'll, I'll try to incorporate that. It was nice to that. see that, knowing that we had done that assessment, was that last year or two years ago, of our capital facilities, didn't we? We, we, we start, you have, yeah, are we in soon, it or yeah. something? Yeah, and so just to see that and think, it just, yeah, it was really a good sense of, mm -hmm. kind of a good reminder of what we've of, been okay, working on and doing, yeah. so thank you for good, that. Good, good. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Maybe another column to add to it, sorry. So percentage that is complete and also would like to know if it was capital facilities funded or grant funded. Okay, mm -hmm. funding so source, okay, yes. would be helpful yes. to see at a glance. Okay. Okay, thanks. Heather? I'm thinking this would make a wonderful article in the Arlington mm -hmm. Update. Mm -hmm. I would, I think there's a bit more information that oh, needs absolutely. to be pulled together. But just mm -hmm. even the columns you've called out tonight, but you said it, this is how we're investing in the city. Yeah. Let's yeah. show them. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Because they're definitely know. hearing that we have more tax money. Right. In. So where's it going? Where's it going? Yes. Yes. So on the tax money, I'm just curious because, <clears throat> I mean, like with community transit, $12 million a month, uh, and all the other cities are seeing the same thing. When you're meeting with your financial uh, partners, are they suggesting why it's been so high? The, I mean, it has been even before prices went up. The sales tax revenue? Yeah, the sales tax revenue. Uh, well, for us specifically, I, I think it's different depending upon what community you're in, but we have had such a robust um, development. The construction mm -hmm. activity is really oh, driving wow. that. Um, you know, I hate to point out particular projects, mm -hmm. but the Amazon project, <laughs> that was a huge, huge driver yeah, of revenue. So, <laughs> so yeah. really for us, I mean, the retail sector and the services sector certainly has been recovering. So that has been contributing. They're getting but more than recovered. They're bounced beyond where they were. Absolutely. In fact, when you look at, you didn't see losses during COVID. Right. And part of that was the investment of the federal government and stimulus funds, yep. child care yeah. tax credits and mm -hmm. things that, you know, kept people, kept people having, money. having pent up buying mm -hmm. yeah, desires. That's true. Less, less vacations, yeah. you know, we saw increases. You see people buying RVs rather than going on. Auto sales. Oh, you know, yeah. trips to yep. Hawaii. We're big. The um, construction has effects on our retail too because there's, those contractors are making a lot of trips to the hardware Lowe's stuff. Yeah. that are not going into construction sales tax. They're just buying, you it, know, bits and pieces as they go. Right. Deborah? Um, just, uh, it's been interesting, again, walking through town and seeing how many stone walls have been built, you know, because a lot of Old Town is built into the hillside. Mm -hmm. and that's not cheap. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, oh, well, that's a way people have invested. Absolutely. My question is back to the sales tax. I was just looking at the different categories, and I was curious, so like department and superstores, was 115,000, and then there's a specialty retail and sporting goods was 475. I'm trying to, so I get the super stores is you know like your big box stores, correct? Correct. And then, but what is, what is 
causing that 475 I was trying to think what stores are categorized under specialty retail and sporting goods that we have here that we have here um, boutiques on Olympic and that sort of thing sure you but know I'm thinking for that much of an increase over your big box stores I didn't buy for, it all but <laughs> <laughs> I would actually have to go back and look at that category specifically yeah. because this viewpoint some of these categories combined go into retail mm -hmm. so I don't want to give oh. you a store that might be in a different category mm -hmm. but that's why yeah I, Department and Superstores, we can probably think of a, a couple yeah. big ones. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm trying to think, yeah, I, I will get back to you. I'm just, yeah, I was just, because that's such a big discrepancy. I mean, it's wonderful. But, but specialty stores would probably be hardware stores as well, too, and stuff. So okay. you think about what we have at Smoky Point mm -hmm. and some of the bigger ones. Okay, yeah. I did, yeah, I was thinking that mm -hmm. under Department and Superstores. So, we intentionally okay. try to be pretty general so that you can't identify a Sure. I understand. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious. The cat. Yeah, so. But hardware stores, you're right, would prob probably fall in the specialty retail special. and sporting. Yeah. Okay, then that helps me at least because I'm kind of like music shop. I'm thinking, or you know, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> so okay. Right. Thank you. Yes. Continue on. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, I wanted to let you know that finance filled our, our vacant finance tech three position. We had an opening back in February, so we filled that. That is our accounts payable position. Uh, we have Caitlin uh, Brossard on board, so we're very excited to have her, and she's doing well. She just started her second week. Um, so I just wanted to alert council that you will probably see her name come across your email. I didn't want you to be surprised when you saw a new name and who is that, but she will start um, sending out the council reports probably uh, the next okay. round. So okay. we're gearing up for that. Uh, utility de delinquent accounts, we are getting back to, or we are back to our pre-pandemic levels, which I'm pleased to report that. I thought it might be a little bit longer process getting there. Um, our number of delinquent accounts continued to decline in March. We had 44, and I'm pleased to say of all of those that were on the shutoff list, all of those had paid, and they did not have a discontinuation of service, so that's good. good. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to update you on, I did uh, provide an update on our city's investment portfolio that's probably not a surprise in talking about all of our construction related um, revenues with our sales tax, our connection fees, permitting fees, all of that are contributing to an increase in our revenues which then translate into an increase in our investment portfolio. So that's good news. Um, we are also seeing a growth in our investment income, mostly right now because we're having an increase in the amount of money that we're investing. Um, the pandemic did have a pretty significant impact on the rates that we were getting for investment. Those are starting to recover actually quite quickly now. Um, I just did an investment today where we're getting close to 3%. I haven't seen investment rates at 3% or over since probably 2008 <laughs> so um, so just wanted to let council know that I have been investing a little bit shorter term because the interest rates have been lower hoping that we get to a point where those going to start increasing so they are so now we'll be able to take advantage of that and now that investments come due this year then we'll be able to reinvest at higher rates and we should um, start seeing a, our continued growth in our investment income any other questions? That completes my report for tonight. Thank you. I really appreciate that you keep extending the information in your report. Yes. You know, me and the council really appreciate yes. that and yeah. giving us suggestions for things we'd like might like to look at. Thank okay. you. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate the feedback. Great. Okay. Any, anybody have any questions for Kristen before we let her go? No. Good okay. job. Okay. I love it. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Paul, do you have any administrative report this evening? Nothing else this evening. I think we covered everything. Okay. I just have one thing I want to call out. I was, we're doing a lot of ribbon cuttings lately in Arlington as we have a lot of new businesses. And um, Jen and I attended last week the ribbon cutting, which was the fanciest ribbon cutting I've ever seen. <laughs> Actually, it was a banquet, more like, um, for the Himalayan dog chew company that's gone in over in the um, Gateway Business Center. They had all 103 employees at their ribbon cutting. Oh wow! Um, as a banquet, and it was it was really interesting <clears throat> just to see the amount of diversity that's coming in with some of the employment. They announced that day uh, um, upping of their starting wage, 
um, and they had flags on the ceiling that represented 18 different countries that showed the country of origin for their employment staff awesome. there. So yeah. uh, they were really uh, inclusive of all their employees being there. But I think what what I loved the most about the whole thing, that the people were nice, it's great to have a cool new business, it's gonna do lots of things, but when one of their um, board of directors was speaking at the beginning to the employees and about the process they went through to open this factory, he spent a significant amount of his time in the mic complimenting and making sure that Jen and I knew how much of an asset Kevin Olander in our CED wow. department was to them. How they nice. had never undertaken something like this to build a 100 square foot facility. It was outside their normal range of business and they said because of Kevin helping them with foresight and hindsight and help focusing on safety um, of the inspections as things went on, they just really felt like they were able to be successful this project awesome. and find this new home. And it was it was just such a calling out. I oh, thought I had to oh. call it out publicly Good. to say yes. that. Very nice. Yeah. And then the next day, I get a call from somebody else out of the blue that really just wanted to let me know what a what a great thing it was that we hired Mark Mark Hayes at the city for his depth of knowledge oh. and what he does to guide oh. development to the right place and be very clear about what they can do and can't do. Um, they just thought it was a breath of fresh air to deal with a city like that. Very so nice I wanted to, to hear. Acknowledge both of them. Yeah. Do we have any comments from council members this evening? If I'm I gonna, oh, oh, well, I'm going to follow up because it's <coughs> along the same vein. I was at a business in um, Smoky Point, Sugar Pine Spa, and the owner was raving about the help of CED and the permit center of a remodel that she's working on. And um, she couldn't remember the name, but I'm think is it Raylene? That's Raylene. Up, Raylene, that's up front. I, I'm thinking it was her that was a help to Jen, the owner, and um, just high praises on their helpfulness. So I wanted to. It it's always makes it's always a point of pride to me to hear the compliments of our staff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And particularly for people who are investing their money in our city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean that's a big deal to invest your money in that. Yeah. We have a staff that understands that that's a significant deal and and wants people to be successful in the process and for their spends business the time and, yeah. to get yeah. there. I think we're very lucky. It Perhaps. benefits us in the end. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. good. The city, yeah. So that was all I had. So when I when I called CED to tell them, like, what a what lovely week this was for me to get these positive <laughs> phone calls, and they said, well, let's just enjoy it while it lasts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a Mark Hayes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I could add on to Barb's, the day before the ribbon cutting, you know, all I had was the address that Sarah had sent out. So I drove down there because, and I've been down there a lot, mm -hmm. and I knew that that one huge building was there. But to be honest, I never thought, I mean, the name and dog shoes, I never imagined it was that building. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so then when I found it was, and then, I think it was yesterday, today, I drove back down there the other, from the other direction and if you haven't been down 174th and seen that, you need to, yeah. because it's huge going across, I mean, horizontal, but then if you look all the way down, it's 110,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. And that is a big building, and it is gorgeous, mm -hmm. gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And fascinating process you guys missed a really good tour mm -hmm. yeah. you know it was like going into the back end of a Costco or something <laughs> <laughs> but of all of the things they do there to get to zero waste really, yeah. and to make a product that's clean and made in America they've invested in agriculture they work with farmers out of Moses Lake um, to get the cheese they need to make yeah. their product I was going to say that because I was talking to one of their employees and one of the directors or whatever and uh, when they were talking about the cheese that went into their shoes. And I asked her, well, where do you get the cheese? Because, I'm sorry, I thought, what, where is it? Nepal. Milwaukee or someplace. Oh. <laughs> and she says, oh, we get it from Moses Lake. And I says, oh my God, I grew up in Moses yeah. Lake. <laughs> and I didn't know we had cheese back there. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it's really and this, a good tradition. And then the following day on Earth Day, um, I, two of our local companies that are new to us, the um, Himalayan Dog Chew and Eviation, both sent employees out to do projects in yeah. our city oh, for yes. Earth Day, so yeah. we, we want to acknowledge nice. that too. 
um, in a park and in the um, community gardens. Yes, I saw that. That was great. Yeah. My dog loves those chews. <laughs> I like have to monitor it and yank it away from them. <laughs> those are great. But that is a great company. I've toured that when they were in Mukilteo. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're really interesting. Cool interesting story of an of the owner. Like, yeah. he was in college and had the idea of three thousand dollars and started in his basement. Mm -hmm. Really, did a couple yeah. of farmers markets in Bellingham and that. Um, to this is the third. Then they moved to Lake Stevens for a small facility, then Macotillo, where they were in three facilities. Yeah. And hopefully, this will be their final home. Yeah. But it's a great story. Huge, mm -hmm. yeah. I did say something to Joe Marine <laughs> on Thursday <laughs> at a meeting. He's on the board of Community Trans, and I says, Oh, Joe, <laughs> we got one of your big nah, companies. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts when it comes the other way. I yes. that. Yes. <laughs> Are there any other comments from council members this evening? Yeah. Do we have any members of the public that wish to speak to the council this evening? <laughs> we'll let you sit in the presenter chair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I was looking at the agenda, council, for the consent agenda for next week. Looked like item number four, uh, the low bid yeah. award. For the yeah. water reclamation could be a consent agenda item. Note that, Jim. Does anybody disagree with that, or is there any others no, you want to see? I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. I was going to put the uh, Square Valley vacation, but it sounds like that needs more work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll have that come back. Yeah. And the other was for budget things, so now they should stay. Okay. So are we done? Okay, Madam Mayor, I move to adjourn. Second. Question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Night, Night Dawn. Dawn. Bye, Dawn. Bye, Dawn. Bye, Dawn. Oh, I forgot he was there. <laughs> yeah. To hear his voice.